How are you? Yes, welcome to uh, my session. And I start by introducing myself. I'm uh, Brother Peter Mukaya Tabichi, um, mathematics and physics teacher at Kiriko uh, Secondary School, which is uh, Ninakuru, Kenya, Africa. And I'm a Franciscan brother of the Catholic Church, for those of you who know the Franciscan brothers. And in this case, uh, we are going to look at uh, these three areas, how to unpack the learning journey of a learner, at the same time uh, to explore the impact of active learning for self-efficacy, and lastly, prospecting a bright future. Uh, first, I have to uh, say what inspired me to become a teacher. I'm a, a proud teacher. I'm very proud to be, to be a teacher. One of the things that inspired me to be a teacher is my family. Uh, uh, my family, like now, most of my family members, eight, more than eight, uh, are teachers. And uh, in particular, my father was a teacher, and I think that's where I got that. Uh, he influenced me to also become a teacher. And uh, he inspired me. Uh, to perceive teachers' role as enlightening others on how to tackle challenges of life. He was doing great work, and from there, I also carried on and I became a teacher. And here he is. He's here. This is my, this is my father. And I'm somewhere here. This is when I was uh, finishing my primary, uh, my, my primary school level, and these are the other students. And he's here. He was a very inspiring man. And there are also the other teachers, but he was the most, uh, the, the man behind all that I'm doing. And uh, this is just, I just took off, uh, a photo of, uh, in one of the sessions, you know, having group discussions, and I'm somewhere here. And we are facing all sorts of challenges. Like now in primary school, uh, I could walk just barefooted, okay? And I just came to learn like how to speak in English when I was like finishing primary, uh, like, uh, around seven, level seven there, okay? So it was very, very challenging, but through uh, his inspiration and the, uh, what the other people did to me, I was able to pass very well and join secondary school. Now, let me talk about my school. My school, as I've said, is Keriko, where I'm working currently, Keriko Secondary, and it is in Africa, here, Kenya, in a region, a Rift Valley region part of Kenya. It's located in a very remote area. You might not even be able to trace it easily unless you get someone to guide you. Then if you are given directions, you might not be able to be there, but you have to get someone to guide you. And uh, it is, has sorts of challenges that you, uh, you hear of um, so many challenges. I trained the school in the here 2015, and I've been there for this, like, my fourth year. And by the time I joined, it was, uh, it had a student population of 200. And uh, currently, we have uh, a student population of 480, and it's still increasing. And that could be due to uh, the good, uh, uh, what we are doing, cooperating with the other teachers, and the school is having a good reputation, and many students are joining the, our school. And here it is. This is just a, a region of Keriko. Uh, it's in Lare, Lare, Lare area. That village is, uh, this village is called Pwani. This so this Pwani village. And here is our school. I don't know whether you, you are able to see it. Here is our school. It is here, and this is where most of the time you come to Kenya. Uh, you, this is where you find me most of the time. I go there very early in the morning and leave there very late because there's a lot to be done, and we don't have uh, like teachers, we don't have men. So this is where I spend most of my, my time. Here, now this, I think this is now magnified. So this is the gate. Get through here. This is uh, staff room, school administration, everything, everything is here as our administration and the word staff room, everything is here. But recently due to the, 
good reputation. The school has been performing so well in many areas, and we have having now students joining university and tertiary colleges. The local readers and the other uh, officials decided to give us an administration block. So this is our new administration block, which is still under construction. And these are the classrooms. There are eight, not enough. So these optional subjects, at times, we, we, we have to get students like uh, studying from uh, outside and maybe under the trees, okay? This is our lab, science, chemistry, physics, biology, everything. But it's, unfortunately, it is not well equipped. And next, this is the picture. If you now get time to go to the school, this is a picture, the kind of picture you get. Students, at times, you may not have teachers because of that, I'd say, shortage of teachers. And this uh, kind of, uh, this is what you get. And next, this is another session, like when I have a session of spiritual program, uh, young Christian students just uh, interacting with them. This was another one. This was some years back, some years back, and this one I took it, it was taken recently. This one here, recently, uh, showing how the, the student population. And some students, like, during this gathering, some students, don't, all of them don't fit in when we have those uh, spiritual, uh, religious sessions. So others have to, like, be outside. This is the staff room, and I just say, let me take, I was touched. I say, let me take a, a photo to remind me at times when I look at this, I, I find myself not doing much because it is so, it's so kind of like, uh, touches my heart, and I keep reflecting what, what is it that can be done and it's not just in our school, even the other schools, you get the same, same thing. And the teachers have a lot to do. And uh, uh, I don't know, you may, I don't know, just find myself shedding tears when I look at this. And this kitchen, uh, and students getting porridge. And this our cook, we call him Papa Peter. This is when they are having meals. Meals are just... Uh, a combination of uh, beans and maize, boiled, uh, no, no tomatoes, no those spices. They just boil them and maybe add a few things and there which are available, and then that's what they take for lunch. And then uh, this is back to the 2007. I just took these photos to also remind me of what, what most of these students went through. At the moment, they have that, they are able to remember what happened. And it's like they have those memories at times when you are sharing with them, they still remember what happened. So it, it was very traumatic. So anything that I'm doing at times, I have to be, remember this, I have to be aware of this, of what happened. And the school is within that region where there was violence, crashes, okay? It was, this is the region, if you heard of uh, variants that were, uh, the, the crashes that occurred in Kenya 2007, that's where the school, that's where they experienced, it was like the hot spot, hot spot of those crashes. And the students have, still have that trauma. And at the moment, maybe next we are going to see some of the measures have, uh, we have taken, okay? And have, uh, like in cooperation with other teachers, to do something in order to really assist the students. And because there is a lot about the school, I'm not going to talk about everything because of time. Because of time, I'm not going to talk about everything. I'm just going to narrow down and just identify one student. And I think that will be better. And this student will just like a representation of what you give you a picture of what the other students face. A student by the name Esther Mimo. Esther Mimo, one of my best students, and uh, uh, is um, so happy to say that he, she is also one of an inter international science and engineering fair finalist. This year is going to be in, uh, to be in uh, uh, Arizona in uh, USA, and she's going to participate together with her. This is Salome. This Salome here. So they have a project, 
and we'll be able to see next about that. So she hails from a very poor family with the two roomed mud house. Not in fact, it is one room which is divided, subdivided into two. And then you'll have a sitting room, and that's where they cook, that's where they do everything, that's where they do the studies, even there's a bed, there is everything. When you go there, you just, they, 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 when, when, when they are sharing with me, there's also another sister of hers. When they are like kind of sharing with me, I just, I just kind of wonder, I don't know what to do next. Okay, I don't know. I was unable to take the photos inside because of uh, you might be kind of shocked what was the kind of how it is inside. So this is outside, and then this is when she's just standing uh, just near the near the door. Uh, Esther has to walk for a long distance. This is just a representation of that's also happens to the other students. I'm just using Esther so that you have a picture of what happens in the school and also not just our school or the others, but like ours has uh, experiences. This one, uh, it is, uh, the, the magnitude is so high. For a long distance, in order to get clean water, which is poured from fenders, there's no water there, so they have to buy. Then they, for the cow, for the and what they have to buy that. She has, she has to share some of the best items with other members, such as clothing and bed. Okay? So I assist at times you may get with the dress and then the following day get the other, the other one also wearing the same. But the bed, when they are sleeping, they, they, they share the same bed. Um, while studying at home, Esther uses a tin lamp. A tin lamp is just a uh, a kind of a lamp, you get a tin, you cut it, and then you cover it. You have kerosene, you put it, and then you have something like um, a lug, and then you light it with a matchbox. It lights. But uh, unfortunately, it produces some smoke, and it's not good for the eyes. If you use it for long, it's going to affect the eyes. It's not really good, and, but she's trained. See, that's, what, that's the only option, because there is no electricity, and that's the only available op option. Food and nutritional security is a big challenge for Esther. And then she walks to school along uh, roads that are impassable in the rain season. Even myself, I use the same roads. Here I am. I use a motorbike at times. Uh, if they are, if uh, at times when when we have a vehicle around, I also use it. But most of the time, I use I use a motor I use a I use a motorbike. And at times when it rains, it is very chaotic, it's very chaotic. At times I fall down. One time I fell down and I injured my leg, okay? But I have to, I have to do it because it's not just all about me. It's for the benefit of the people, the students that I'm serving. And uh, when I was injured, when I was injured on this leg, uh, it was like the beginning. I said I cannot just give up and maybe go back to the the people that I stay, I stay with and tell, tell them that now I'm going to give up. I said, this is going to be the beginning. I have to be, like, it has to be a source of my motivation. She cannot access any online educational content. So this is like uh, something you cannot get. Uh, internet, that's maybe, uh, it's like a dream. You cannot get such a thing there. Because of the poor internet, even the first place we don't have the internet. Okay, like myself, if I to use it, I have to like use the data, and then I use with the phone and my laptop hotspot, and I struggle. I keep struggling trying to access the internet. At school, she cannot study well due to the lack of facilities, such as library and well-equipped classrooms. Uh, the school has only one desktop computer, which is shared between the secretary, the teachers, everyone, okay? So if I'm doing something, I have to, I have to talk to the, I have to request, I have to make arrangements area, and then that is it. But recently, I talked to my friends. We got one someone who was able to donate for us. The one, we, we now have two. And then we now go to the, what was, some of the things we have done Maybe myself, I've tried to spearhead in collaboration with the other teachers. 
Uh, that environment is very nice. I found very supportive teachers, the school administration, and we have tried to do some of the, uh, some of the things, uh, some, of the, some of the measures. The first one is introduction of the Peace Club with the focus of uniting the local communities following the post-election violence that occurred in the year 2007-2008. Peace Club, this one unites them. It, it makes them forget what they are experiencing at home because of where they come from and what they, that trauma what occurred in the, during that time. Because some of them, they are orphans and they were, their parents were killed during that time. The school has been receiving donations from our charity program as Franciscan Brothers, so I'm a member of Franciscan Brothers. Franciscan Brothers have been uh, also assisting. And in this case, I'm a member of this, of which I contribute 8% of my salary. And then the rest goes for things like the, the fare, getting the air time, and some personal needs, like 20%. Now, 80% of it goes the, through the Franciscan brothers, and then it goes to assist these, these uh, situations. Feasting our home, uh, I feast our home during weekends and whenever there is time, meeting our family to identify the challenges they, they face. And then one, the other thing is uh, the introduction of uh, kitchen gardening as one way of uh, addressing food insecurity because I've said most of the time they don't have they, 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 go, they go just go angry, they don't get meals. They, most of them rely just on the only meal provided at school. That's porridge for breakfast. Some of them, they just come to school. They take water and come to school. And then githeri, that's a combination of maize and, pain, uh, maize and pins. So as one way, I know I cannot just give them food. I, I don't have the power. I said I cannot just watch this one. I have to do something. Something, even if it's small, it is really going to address. So kitchen gardening is an area, and this one uh, uh, I've been working on. So the school administration has also embraced her father. Her father has been embraced at school to work. And from there, they are able to get at least some income, which will be able to assist the community. So here is her father. Uh, this is called Mr. Imbusi, okay? repairing desks and here also working on the construction for the new administration block, which has, we, have been, uh, we have been given. So, and then the other thing is, uh, I know there is much that we, we can do, but I cannot do everything because I have to be in class. There is a lot to be. So, and I have to take some sacrifices. I just chose one area, science, because I know science, with science, you are going to, uh, science can do a lot. So that's an area, I said, let me, let me uh, really take that lane. So I've been, uh, I was made the patron of the science club and I've been mentoring other students. Now in this case her, I've been mentoring her to design uh, research projects of, of such quality, uh, which made her qualify for national, uh, national, uh, uh, national, national competitions. And of course, there is a time like last year, our school was the first nationally beating those giant even international schools and emerging, and that surprised people. And uh, that was some, it didn't happen by a miracle. Some sacrifices were, were done. She invented a device to allow blind and deaf people to measure objects. She's also among, I've said this is, she's also one of the finalists. And then at the moment, She's working on this, uh, still on the project. There are no, she doesn't have ICT, so I'm first, I said let me introduce her to ICT to have some basics in, co in computer, and then later on, we are trying to see how the project, they can integrate Arduino technology, which will make that project be a kind of a reality because it's a kind of a prototype. And in this case, I'm just going to demonstrate to you uh, one of the things that I use, like during the, those science innovations, what we do, and in this case, we are going to have a mathematical uh, kind of work here, and in this case, which is going to be a demonstration of active learning as a strategy of teaching science, 
Because when I teach, I don't just go uh, singing and just reciting. I have to engage the students because with this, if it's going to enhance their creativity, they become very creative, they become very innovative, and all of that, that is really going to make them very useful people. And I've seen uh, so much uh, benefits from that. So in this case, I'll uh, request some volunteers, maybe four, Two, two for your tears to come with. There's just a small task here we'll, we'll perform. Two for your tears. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Thanks. Yeah, two, two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even three, that's okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Can have. So, in this case, we are estimating the area. There is a piece of paper here given. These two. And we want to estimate the area, the surface area of this. Uh, what we normally do, what, we, uh, what is there in the books is that counting, counting square where you have a grid. But to make it more interesting for the, you see when the students touch, when they mm -hmm. we engage them in this, they are able to learn more and it enhances creativity. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have these papers here. This is, uh, 10 by 10, mm -hmm. so you guess the area is going to be? Yes. Mm -hmm. The area is going to be, if it is 10 by 10, the area would be what? What is the area? Just multiplied by yeah. 10. <laughs> what would be the area? 10 by 10. Yes? 10 by 10. 100. 100 square centimeters. So this is 100 square centimeters. This is, the smaller one is 5 by 5. So what will be the area? 25. 25. So we are going to use these small ones and the bigger ones. You start with the bigger ones, and then the small spaces that are going to remain, you fill with the what? The smaller ones. And then from there, are you, will you be able to get the area of this, the surface area? This is an irregular okay. surface. Are you able to get that? Yeah. yeah. So you can uh, stick. Okay, so can, uh -huh. You can stick. Uh, but if you are able to just arrange, uh, just okay, put so them without use groups, this. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just two groups. I don't know whether it's... Uh, what? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Then you arrange it to the extreme end. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. to be fast because of time. Oh, you need this one. Yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just a minute. Uh, let me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. You put them at the extreme end uh -uh. so that, mm -hmm. yeah, well, uh -huh. approximately. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. up to st start, start with this end, oh. and then occupy yeah. up, up, uh -huh. Can I, no, no. Yeah, 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 that's okay, that's okay now. Uh, and then the others, no spacing, yeah, like this, space. Now the remaining spaces you fill in with the small ones, yeah. Then in the next you count, you count the large ones and the small ones. Then that's, at the end of it, you should be able to get the total area within a very short time. And in this case, I've just picked five by five and 10 by 10 because it's very easy to get the area. I could not have picked seven by seven because you'll be straining trying to get, if there are three and you choose seven by seven, the area is very hectic trying to get the sum. Huh? So picking 10 by 10 and then five by five, that will be, you'll be able to get the total area with in a very short time. So the first group is going to tell us what they got, the small and the large ones. Mm -hmm. So here. 
So this one, where do you put this? Teacher, help us. Yeah, yeah, that one. Put it there. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Um, just you just leave it. Now feel the remaining ones. Now feel the small ones. Yeah. Then that one. Put it here. And now there's many. No, 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 no. Put use the smaller ones now. Yeah. Now that one has. Uh, yeah, throw it. Those big ones. Now use the smaller ones. Yeah. Use the small ones now. Because if you use the big ones, then they will not be able to fit in that space. Okay. Time is over. Time, time. Okay. So we've just finished. Uh -huh. But uh, it can be approximately. Yeah. Like it is an, uh, it's yeah, it's a way of, of approximating. But now, another trick. You can as well get one by one. I wanted to get one by one, but because of time I was unable to. I wanted yeah. so that they will also be able to oh, fill yeah. one by one. Uh -huh. And yeah. it's also very easy to work with one by one. Yeah. yeah. But for now, we can just work with this. Yeah. 875. Wow. We multiplied these ones for 850, and then we added these ones for 250. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like one, uh -huh. one uh, this one. Okay, so here, the bigger ones you have. Uh, you've got 850. This are how many? The yeah, big yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, all of them. Six. Six. Oh, six. 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 And then the bigger ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 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 Yeah. And then this one by? Hundred. Uh, Hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And plus approximately this. Ten five. Uh, yeah, because we added uh, yeah. the space left, like uh, one of these uh, pink ones. Oh, and that's okay. Eight hundred seventy-five. Uh -huh. Then let's wait for the second group. And they should be similar. Yes. The, yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, depending on how they arrange them, you might have yeah. a slight difference. Yeah. But they should not. The range should not be that big. You can use, Works. you can use this. You can also switch off. <laughs> You've got 225. Okay, now let's, there might be a difference be, depending on uh, the arrangement. We could have as well used the smaller ones, but because of time, eh? to fill in the remaining spaces, maybe you can show them, but this one is falling. Okay. Yeah, that's, all, that's enough. Okay. Now you tell us what we have done and what you have gotten. So maybe I will start and you finish. Can we multiply the number of mic? So we have six of them, and it is so Just, just a minute. Sorry? Minute, a minute, a mic. So uh, we started from uh, the yellow ones, uh, and we multiplied them. Uh, there are six of them, so it is 150. And then? Uh, and then we counted how many small squares we have got and uh, multiplied uh, 25, which is the area of a small fair, uh, square, by 10, because we have got 10 of them. And also, uh, as you can see, there are some uh, spaces left where uh, the squares do not fit. So we kind of uh, agreed that approximately the area of the squares, which are, uh, of the spaces which are left, would be equal to one little square. So we added 25, which is this uh, area of one small square. So you, the total area you get? Uh, it is 875, 875 approximately. 875, uh, I normally encourage my students to state the units. OK, you also uh, state the units. <laughs> was it in centimeters? Yeah, 875 yeah. centimeters. <laughs> we are centimeters. We are the teachers of English. <laughs> yeah, we teach English. Okay, <laughs> maybe we clap so we for them. We did our best. <laughs> now we get the second group. Yeah, we get the same answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, the same I'm answer going. actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. May we? Let's appreciate them. them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, Thank go back. You. Thanks so much. Okay, so 
Uh, at the end of it, you'll be able to uh, get. You see, they are also getting creative. They are getting creative, and there are also other ways of getting that. And uh, here is a video of some of those students presenting where to present. And I am Sami. The show of our project is a Samita. It was derived from our first names, Esther, Salome. But because of time, we might not be able to watch the whole of it. It takes like 10 minutes. So this is a classic solution to calculate the number of different objects. The calibration done on me measuring instruments like this ruler may fade over time due to the. So, what do I envision as success? In this case, um, uh, in this case, seeing my learners grow in knowledge, skills, and confidence is my greatest, greatest joy in teaching. And that's what I am when I'm teaching. That's I have to ensure that that is achieved. When they become resilient, creative, and productive in the society, I get a lot of satisfaction. You see, the, someone here was trying to get creative, trying to approximate the remaining, saying that I should add one. Okay, that's. That's part of creativity. And that will be transferred later on to life when they finish. So they so become creative. And then, in this case, act as their greatest destiny enabler and a key that unlocks, uh, unlocks their potential. They have a lot of potential, and I'm the one who unlocks that potential. Thanks so much.